Hi, I am Butterflies. We are delighted to have another interview with our friend, Dr. Judy Laredo. She has just written a book, and I have some questions for her out of it, and it is called Don't Tell Judy No. We'll have a link to it, so you can order it uh, if you want to. And the subtitle is A Journey from Predicted Failure to Inspirational Leadership. So Dr. Judy, thank you so much. I noticed you have Mariposa with you. Yes, is, I do. It's the only time I get to hold a dog. <laughs> That's your little god dog, Mariposa. We ran a story on her a few weeks ago from a little cocker rescue named after Butterfly. So anyway, she loves her godmother, Dr. Judy, that's for sure. So before I get started with my questions, can you just give a brief, brief overview of your professional career, just to remind everybody, in case they haven't seen some of the earlier videos? My career spanned 47 years. I started off as a speech pathologist with the Edgewood Independent School District, and then very quickly, <laughs> Didn't do that, but for about six months, and then moved into school administration, developing a program for preschool handicapped children for the Bureau of the Handicap that ultimately became a model program in the state of Texas. I ended up staying in public education, became director of special ed, and then decided that it was time, if I was gonna do any impact in education, that I needed to have a doctorate. And so I ended up leaving the Edgewood School District to take on full-time doctoral studies at the University of Texas at Austin when I was offered an, an appointment in their superintendency training program. I figured that if I became a superintendent of schools, then I could impact change if I was at the helm. So I moved to Austin and uh, started my studies and then went back and decided that maybe what I needed to do was look for a job. And I didn't realize how difficult it would be to get a job at the young age that I was, but somehow the Lord put something in front of me and led me to the Southside School District where I became a school superintendent and served there for four years. I left there and went into higher education and spent the rest of my career in higher education as a dean at Houston Tillotson University. And when I left HT, I went to the State Department of Higher Education and was an assistant commissioner overseeing one of their divisions. So my career is really from K-12 all the way through higher education, not only teaching, but administration. Well, so in your book, Don't Tell Judy No, there are just a few things that I would love to go over for our readers and our, and our listeners. And so the first question is, in your book early on, you talk about how it's important to stand up for what is right. When have you had to stand up for what is right? Probably the most uh, important thing that sticks out in my mind was early on in my career when I was director of special ed. <coughs> I uh, was approached by the Board of Trustees to see about moving our Early Childhood Handicap Project into the Jose Cardenas Early Childhood Center, which was a very, very well-known center named after the superintendent. Dr. Cardenas was a brilliant educator. Well, a lot of people did not like that. In fact, they were quite unhappy that they were going to be putting handicapped children into a building with regular children but I decided that it was right. It was right for my kids, and it was right for the teaching staff. And so I stood up for that right, which uh, ended up costing me um, having to go to court and literally sue an individual who carried picket signs with people in front of the administration building calling me educator or thief. Well, I wasn't a thief, I was an educator. So I stood up for the rights of my kids, even though it cost me a lot of headaches. Well, and that leads <coughs> into the second question that I wanted to ask you, because the, another thing that stood out to me in your book was you talked about refusing to give up. <coughs> give us some examples of when you've refused to give up in your professional career and in your, in your life. Well, I had a nun when I was in high school tell me that I was uh, too stupid to be educated. And I thought, well, I'm going to prove her wrong and in spite of the fact that I did struggle in school because I learned 
my uh, freshman year of college that I probably really had a learning disability. Uh, I do not write, I do not type, or not really type. I don't write anything. I dictate everything and then I have it transcribed and typed for me or I transcribe it myself. And that is one of the challenges that I faced in going through school because I didn't learn to read till I was in third grade. My mother taught me how to read, uh, literally read every word in a book. And sight reading is not the measure of real reading. And so I never gave up, even though I faced many academic struggles. I will admit I ended up taking several classes over in the community college. When I went to college, my great sum of a 14 score on the ACT would not have gotten me into a college of choice. I went to the community college, never told my parents how bad my score was, I just told them I wanted to go to a school where there was boys because I had been in an all-girls school all my life. So no matter what I faced in struggles academically, I just knew that there was a way to overcome that, that problem. Well, and then you also served as a role model for your colleagues and also for your students your entire career. And so at one point, you had to make that decision. You mentioned it earlier in your intro that you made a decision to move from San Antonio to Austin. You had already been in Austin at the University of Texas, but then you were teaching and, and being an administrator and principal and superintendent in San Antonio. And so you transitioned back to Austin and it's called Sunny Days. Tell us about the Sunny Days and how you transitioned back to Austin. Well. It was during my superintendency that unfortunately I, I went through a divorce and I was alone and I was raising my daughter and really that was my intention was to devote myself to my career and raise my child. I had no intentions of ever remarrying again until Mr. Sonny crossed my path and when I met Sonny uh, he was a very intriguing individual a self-made man, has never spent one day in college, but worked very hard to achieve what he has achieved. And he has, he started his own company when he was 28, and he has now celebrated 54 years with his company. So the sunny days started and we dated for four years before we married. And when we married, I had to move to Austin. So I had to give up my superintendency which some women thought I was crazy to do. They told me no man was worth giving up what I had, but I thought he was worth giving it up for. So I left uh, San Antonio and moved to Austin and started another life here. And the transition, I did not know what to do. I didn't know anybody in Austin other than my professors at the university. And my colleagues, the students that I had studied with had all moved on to different parts of the state. So I wrote the governor's office and their Department of Community Affairs, sent them my resume and told them I wasn't looking for a job, but I was looking for ways to get involved in the community. And that's how it started. And before I knew it, I was on the Brackenridge Hospital Board, the Laguna Gloria Board, the Ronald McDonald Board. So that's how I made my transition. Well, we're so glad you did. And thank you so much for your time today. We are going to do several other videos, so we'll be able to dig a little deeper into some of your thoughts. So thank you, Dr. Judy. We really appreciate it. And, and your little god dog, Mariposa. Thank you so much. You're welcome.